Good evening. With the quorum being available, I now call to order the Tuesday, March 24th, 2020, remote work session of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed from March 16th through March 27th in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. As a result, this meeting will be held remotely and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website, bcps.org, or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. May I have a motion to go into closed session as permitted by the Open Meetings Act as found in the Annotated Code of Maryland, General Provisions, Article 3-305, B1 and B7, to one, discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, and seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. Lisa Mack, so moved. Julie Hen, second. Thank you. May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. I would also like to acknowledge the staff members that are participating. Mr. Homer McCall, Ms. Margaret Ann Howie, Mr. Andy Nussbaum, Dr. Daryl Williams, and Mr. Michael Dickerson, and Tracy Gover. Thank you, Ms. Gover. Good evening. With the quorum participating, I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, March 24th, 2020, in accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are currently closed in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. As a result, tonight's Board of Education meeting is being held remotely and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website, bcps.org, or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, or Verizon Fios Channel 34. The first item on the agenda is the agenda. Dr. Williams, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? There are no changes or additions to tonight's agenda. Thank you. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Open Meetings Act for the following reasons. To one, discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, and seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. The minutes of the closed session and informational summary can be found on our website at www.bcps.org slash board slash informational dash summaries dot html. The next matter on the agenda is personnel. For that, we call forward Mr. McCall to present the personnel matters. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Chairwoman Vice Chairwoman Hen, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. I'd like the board's consent for the following personnel matters. Retirement, resignation, 
receipt recognition of service. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibits C1 through C3? So moved, Lisa Mack. Do I have second. a second? Second, Julie Han. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Joe? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. McCall. The next item on the agenda is new business administrative appointments. And for that, we call on Dr. Williams. Madam Chair and members of the board, I would like to bring forward for your approval the following administrative appointments. Principal of Church Lane Elementary School, Principal of Sollers Point Technical High School, and the Chief Administrative and Operations Officer in the Division of Business Services. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointments as presented in the updated Exhibit D1? So moved, Lisa Mack. Do I have second. a second? Second, Julie Han. Thank you. Board members, is there any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Ms. Hamm? Yes. Ms. Pauzy? Yes. Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Mack? Yes. Yes. Ms. Scott? Scott? Yes. Yes. Ms. Rowe? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. Our first candidate is Tammy Coit, principal of Church Lane Elementary School. Currently, she's the assistant principal at Dogwood Elementary School. Uh, she has previous experience in Baltimore City, up to 10 years. And we want to congratulate Ms. Coit as the new principal of Church Lane Elementary. Yes, congratulations. Our next candidate is Kathleen Setzer as the principal of Sollers Point Technical High School. Currently, she is the assistant principal of Patapsco High School. And prior to that, she served as the assistant principal of Perry Hall High School. She brings a uh, wealth of experience, close to 15, over 15 years of experience in Baltimore County Public Schools. Congratulations, Ms. Setzer. Yes, congratulations. And our final candidate, Brian Scriven, Dr. Scriven, as the Chief Administrative and Operations Officer. Currently, he's serving as the Acting Chief Administrative and Operations Officer Prior to this position, he served as the executive director of school support. He also worked in Montgomery County for five years and served in Baltimore County Public Schools as a principal, assistant principal, and teacher, close to 22.6 years of experience. Congratulations, Dr. Scriven. Yes, congratulations. 
And thank you, Dr. Williams. The next item on the agenda is new business board policies. Members of the board, the policy review committee asks that the board accept this report of the committee's approved proposed changes to the following board policies. Policy 5540, alcoholic beverages, controlled substances, intoxicants, prescription and non-prescription drugs. Policy 5551, gangs, gang activity, and similar destructive or illegal group behavior. And policy 5580, bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, or intimidation. These recommendations are presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit E. Do I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the board's policy review committee? So moved, Pasteur. Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Pastor? Yes. yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Penn? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item F, public comment. Because the board is meeting remotely, for today's meeting, only written public comments can be accepted. Comments may be emailed to boe at bcps.org, and these comments will be distributed to the Board of Education members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for follow-up by his staff. Additionally, public comment for board policies 5540, 5551, and 5580 have been accepted online and may be submitted for the appropriate policy on the BCPS webpage under policies and rules, policies available for public comment link, or they may be sent to boe at bcps.org. The links for these sites have been available in board docs March 19th, 2020. The next item on the agenda is item G, New Business Contract Awards. At this time, I would like to call on Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to present contracts G1 through G3. Good evening. This is Mr. Dixit. Uh, we have three contracts for your approval. First contract is JBO-713 dash 20 for air conditioning, uh, including classrooms, multi-purpose room, um, for, and cafeteria at Bedford Elementary School. The second contract, CWA dash 115 dash 20 is for air conditioning of Delaney High School. The spaces included are uh, classrooms and all of the ad alternates which included, and I'll read it to you. Uh, there were several ad alternates here, which you see in the board exhibit. Air conditioning in the cafeteria, air conditioning in the auditorium, gymnasium, wrestling room, weight room, and, and duct work in gymnasium. Thank you. Mr. Dixit, could we go back to the Bedford Elementary School installation? Sure. Could you also read the alternates that will be available for the school? 
Thank you. Okay, the, the alternate included for Bedford are air conditioning, the multi-purpose room, and air conditioning cafeteria. Okay, thank you. Board members, are there comments or questions related to the Bedford Elementary School installation of air conditioning? Yes, I couldn't Molly? understand. I had difficulty understanding Mr. Dixit. Can you repeat his answer, please? Okay, uh, I assume your question is for Delaney High School? Ms. No. Pastor, I believe, is asking about the Bedford, Bedford. Elementary School. Bedford. The Bedford, there were two ad alternates in addition to classroom. That is multi-purpose room and cafeteria. So both of those spaces and classrooms will be air conditioned. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. It was the classroom that I missed hearing. Thank you. Okay. Do you, do you have any questions on Delaney High School? Going back to that. Thank you. Okay. So the I, third I and final. Roger, no. The Mr. Carsey, can I ask a question? Sure. Did I hear a question? I'm asking Mrs. Carsey if I can have a question. Yes, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Dixon, can you explain to me about the Laney and Lansdowne money mm -hmm. being appropriated for air conditioning? When these schools, there's conversation about new buildings for these schools. So why are we talking about like $16 million for air conditioning if there's a possibility these schools are going to be replaced in the relatively near future? Well, there was a special state grant that was provided to us and partially funded by the county to air condition all schools, even if they were under design and are going to be replaced. As part of that initiative, we included every school that is under design and that may not have air conditioning. So the, the schools that I'm sharing with you today will have self-contained units in classrooms covered under this grant. Okay. so. When do you project these, the Delaney and the Lansdowne projects to begin? Well, with the current situation, it is difficult to be absolutely accurate, but what we were hoping before this situation, that by September or before of 2021, we'll have air conditioning in these spaces. You'll have them completed by 21? That's correct. I just, I'm confused on the, the cost effectiveness of this. If we're, we're talking $16 million, are we then going to turn around? And I realize that a high school takes from design to finish five years. Is that what we're looking at? Is that we're going to air condition yes. these schools for, for five years and then, you know, then we move into the new schools possibly? How far down the road are we talking about here? Well, I cannot tell you the time frame for the new school because there are no construction funds approved for, uh, and, you know, for the Delaney High School. So from the planning to the final construction, it may take any place from five to seven years. So the question we have in front of us, do we leave these schools non-air conditioned for that length of time? And because of all of that, State under Healthy School Grant provided funds. It counted which in, which is in their share to air condition these schools. And, and the board chair is very much familiar with that grant. Mr. Dixit, this is Lisa Mack. Um, yes. Ms. Causey, may I ask a question? Yes. Mr. Dixit, again, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but five to seven years is your best guess estimate, right? It could be longer that the schools would be, be without air conditioning? That's true. So while I agree with Mr. McMillian that it's a lot of money for schools that are going to be replaced, there's a lot of years where kids would be going to schools 
without air conditioning and uh, you know i think it's money well spent so thank you for that update mr dixit okay this is molly i have a question uh, yes mr dixit um from doing this i looked at several alternatives and there's a base bit is there an option for us to just get the base bit and then pick different alternatives to keep the cost down because Mr. McMillian is right. That's a lot of money that's going into uh, putting air conditioning for schools that are going to be demolished. And going by the fact that they are in design right now, between design and construction, there may be seven to eight years, and I, I reckon that. But having said that, $16 million is a lot of money for a, a school district like ours. And is it possible to lower the cost by picking different alternatives for all, uh, for Lansdowne and Delaney, which I think are the biggest bang for the buck, so it's about $9 million along with the contingency amount that you put through, which is 10%. And Bedford is, is not that high, but that is a lot of money. And, and I just have concern about putting almost $16 million out there for air conditioning that's gonna be ripped down in seven years. Well, we don't know whether it is seven years or five years or nine years. Uh, as you know, we are in the, in the process of developing a multi-year plan uh, for all schools. And when you consider all the needs and all of the funding that's going to be available, the, uh, any, any time frame um, is not certain. We don't know at this point. And also, I'd like to refresh the memory that there was a lot of uh, concern in community for schools that are not air conditioned. So this, this, but this initiative is very much geared because of the, uh, the community's interest, because of what they wanted. Other and I get members? that the community, um, to Mr. Dixon, I get that the community interest in it, but the community I don't think is aware of the fiscal impact, and I think that is where my concern is when, um, you know, you go in for infrastructure projects, people ask you for things and they're not aware of what the fiscal impact is and if, you know, the community would change based on seeing $16 million for, and I also get the fact that, it, but it isn't designed, once something is, de is designed and you're spending considerable amount of money on design, if it sits on the shelf, that whole design would be redundant if it just sits there for five, ten years, going from engineering to construction because all those permits would have expired. And so there's that redundancy and waste of taxpayer dollars there as well. So my concern as an engineer is how are we going to make sure this is fiscally responsible use of taxpayer dollars and how do we make sure that something that's designed from what you're saying is um, not accurate, it just sits on the shelf. And that happens a lot as well. You design and you don't have construction dollars and then that design becomes redundant. So, and I know I'm, I'm asking questions you probably don't have the answers for, but I'm just thinking out loud. And I think this is something that board members need to be aware of just um, fiscally. Mr. Dixit, can you speak to the design process for the contracts that are in front of us for Bedford Elementary School, Lansdowne High School, and Delaney High School? You mean for the design of the school or for design of this air conditioning initiative that we are talking about? The design of the air conditioning initiative on the contracts that we'll be voting on shortly. All of the design is complete, and after the design is complete, it is the contract is bid. And what you are seeing is the results of the bid. And so who did the design work? Uh, there were three different design companies that were involved in the design. I don't have the name of the design companies in front of me. Okay. Kathleen? Ms. Causey. Ms. Causey, may I ask a question? Yes, Ms. Mack. Mr. Dixit, um, is there, are there parts of the systems that you will be installing in these schools that can be reused in another capacity in other schools, um, like the compressor or um, 
you know, whatever the p parts of the air conditioning system are that will be put in these three schools, is there anything that can be reused elsewhere in a different or same capacity? That's a great question. Uh, the units that we are using in all of these three schools, they can be removed and they can be installed in other non-air conditioned space. Now, if the units have been in the school for a long time, long time meaning 10, 15 years, it may not be cost effective to those to, to use those units. But for example, Bedford is next on the list for construction when the funds become available. So hopefully the units that we'll be using at Bedford, we should be able to use in a cost effective manner in other classroom spaces that are not air conditioned. The same is good for Lansdowne High School. Because the school is under design, the units that we are going to be using there, there is good probability that we'll be able to use those units in other non-air conditioned spaces in the system. And so um, those, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, pr so from the total cost, can and I this might be putting you on the spot, and I apologize, but of the amount of money and the given the option that we could reuse it what amount of the what percentage of the money is non-recoverable like maybe duck work that we wouldn't reuse or things like that yeah there is minimal of duct work that is needed in these systems these are pretty much self-contained units so it is difficult to pull that number out but if you have to uh, for the estimation, a good 30% of the money perhaps can be reused at other places where, need, where the air conditioning is needed. Mr. Dixit, did the engineering firm do a life cycle analysis of the units and a salvage value um, in terms of if it had a 5, 10 year, 15 year life cycle and what was the salvage value or scrap value, what we call at the end? Because um, Ms. Mack is correct, not everything is going to be reusable. There's just going to be some that's going to have to be written off. Yes, Thank you, Ms. Joes, no. for that question. Thank you. Mr. Dixit, can you respond to Ms. Joes' question? Yeah, the question is, has a life cycle study been done? No, there is no life cycle study that has been done. But by experience, we know that these units have a life of anywhere from 10 to 15 years. So if the unit is four, five, seven years old, it will still be cost effective to use it in some other location which is not air conditioned. As a system, we still have a lot of non-air conditioned spaces, including gyms, some classrooms, and, uh, and other spaces. So we can effectively use these units in those areas that are not air conditioned. Also, there is some cost of uh, increasing the electrical load and, and the electrical capacity for these schools. For example, we'll be increasing uh, electrical capacity at Lansdowne and Delaney, and that would have been needed if we built a new school there. So some of that money uh, can be effectively used. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Mr. Kazi, can I ask another question? Uh, just one moment, Mr. McMillian. I want to see if there's other board members who have not yet spoken who would like to make a comment. Let me just start around the dais. Mr. Kuhn? Nope. Ms. Pasture spoke once already. Mr. Offerman? I'd like to know. Uh, what the uh, what what the total cost of this is? If and, and I'm assuming that the 60 million is is uh, is uh, our part. Is that correct? No, 16 million is the total part. You mean for these two projects that you're talking about? Yes. Uh, Lance. Yes. Okay. So that is the total part, state right. and county. Approximately half the money is county and other half is state. Thank you. Mr. Rashid?
Mr. Rashid, do you have a question or a comment related to the three contracts? No, I do not. Thank you. Ms. Hen? Um, just one comment. I'm thankful for the supplemental funding for these projects um, from the state and the county match and look forward to seeing them move forward. Thank you. And then, uh, Ms. Scott, did you have an opportunity to make a um, comment yes. or question? Yes, thank you. I actually had a, a question. Um, so where does Campfield fall into all of this? Campfield's uh, contract was already approved by the board, so we are proceeding right. with the installation of camp. And what's the timeline? Uh, we are moving as fast as we can. Like I said, under these conditions, it is very difficult to say about camp field. But camp field was a situation where the piping system was already there. So we okay. were hoping to be able to do it um, come September. But I don't know how it's going to go because of this situation that we are facing Certainly. right now. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Prior to, I mean, this situation throws everything off. But prior to that, you were uh, hoping for September. Okay. Yes, and yeah, and if we can do sooner than that, we'll definitely try to do that. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Rowe, did you have a question or comment related to the three contracts? Uh, yes, I do. So um, these contracts, my understanding, and Mr. Dixit, is that they're the result of special grant money in which the county matched. So for whatever reason, we were to not approve the contract. Is it correct that this money cannot be reallocated because it was grant money? So we either spend it the way they're offering it or we don't get it at all? That's my understanding. Okay. And so um, I think one of, the, one of the things people need to realize is that this isn't just about that this is done to prevent the closure of these non-air conditioned schools and the months of extremely uncomfortable and unhealthy conditions in which these children are learning in an inequitable environment while other children are learning in air conditioning and taking tests at the time of the year when it's the hottest time of the year. Is that correct? Are you asking me? That's correct. Yeah, so this would prevent schools from closing on hot days and prevent inequitable school conditions. Once the project is completed, you are right. Okay, and so will having these air conditioning units um, in these schools and having all of our schools fully air conditioned allow us to more easily um, comply with the temperature, classroom temperature guidelines of the IAC school sufficiency standards? I'm not sure what guidelines you're talking about. So the IEC has school sufficiency standards that they passed a year ago, and they have classroom temperature guidelines that school systems are supposed to be moving towards having um, classroom temperatures within a certain acceptable range. And it's my understanding that these air conditioning units will allow us to keep classroom temperatures within those ranges more so than not having any air conditioning at all for the next five to 10 years. That is correct, but I just want to remind that that's a guideline, not a mandate. Yes, I understand. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. So I will uh, take my turn to comment. I would just like to thank um, Dr. Williams and Mr. Dixit and all of the facilities and construction teams that worked to apply for this grant um, over the summer and then it was approved uh, early in the fall by the state. I also want to acknowledge the um, Governor, the Comptroller, and the Board of Public Works Treasurer, Ms. Kopp, all of whom uh, were pivotal in highlighting the needs of children to have equitable learning environments. I also want to acknowledge the County Executive who, after the IAC awarded the grant to Baltimore County Public Schools, that the County Executive very quickly 
allocated the necessary match so that we could move forward with these projects. I also want to um, point out that we had in the August of 2018, and actually, I'm sorry, it was September, where we had 10 schools closed for the first three days of school because of excessive heat. So it really is a matter of equity and providing an excellent opportunity for each of our children. So thank you all for that work. Now, are there other board members that wanted to comment for the second time? I Bob, would, please. Ms. Pasture, I heard you. Yes. Okay. I just, um, I, I want to ditto the gratitude um, our babies at Camp Field, our staff and the parents, the community are ecstatic. And we did understand that they are more or less um, standalone um, um, what mechanisms and that they could be reused. But we're happy for however long and also to piggyback on Ms. Scott's question about Camp Field, um, just uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And we're looking forward to Bedford's new building and at some point Millbrook being put on the list. So our babies who are at Camp Field may go to their home schools. Thank you all for everything that you have been doing. Board members, any other questions? This is Ms. Causey. This is Rob McMillian. I'd like to make another comment. Yes. Construction. I distinctly remember an elementary school from design to finish was projected for three years. A middle school from design to finish was four years, and a high school from design to finish five years. In this conversation this evening, we've talked about five to seven years, and then I even heard eight to nine years metric. In the best case scenario, Mr. Dixon, if this money, the construction money was available, when would, you know, Bedford, Lansdowne, and Delaney possibly start in the best case scenario? When would they break ground for construction? Okay, the Bedford, the design has already been completed. It is close to complete and we are waiting for state funding. So every school is in a different situation. So Bedford, all that we need is two summers of construction. Okay, so that's about 15 to 18 months. We don't have state funds yet, and if they come after this summer, then you can add two summer to that and you, you'll, get, you'll get their school opening year. Lansdowne is under design. So, it's about five years from now if the funding, if the construction funding is available, it's five years from now. For the Delaney, we, it, we, there is no design, there, there's no design, there's nothing there right now, there's no construction funds. It's just a little bit of money for preliminary design. So Delaney is not, at least for the next five years, Delaney is not there. But how, how long it's going to be, your guess is as good as mine. Did I answer your question, sir? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Board members, are there any other questions or comments before we vote on these contracts? Hearing no for further uh, discussion, may I have a roll call vote? Ms. Pauls, you need a motion. Do I have a motion to approve items G1 through G3? Lily Rowe. So yeah. moved, Lisa. Excuse me. Ms. So Ms. Lily Rowe moved the motion. And Lisa Mack, were you the second? I'll second Lisa Mack, yes. Thank you. This is causing. Can we vote on those separately? Yes, we may. So, Mr. Dixit, G1 is... Bedford Elementary School. Ms. Gover, okay, may we have a roll call vote? 
Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Posey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Favors 10. Thank you. Mr. Dixit, the item G2 is Delaney High School. That's correct. Ms. Gover, may I have a roll call vote? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Favors 11. Thank you. And item G3, which is Lansdowne High School, may I have a roll call yes. vote? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Bestier? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rissi? Yes. Ms. Penn? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Favor is 10. Thank you. And uh, once again, thank you, Mr. Dixit, and to your team. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is information. Attached to board docs is the superintendent's revised rule 4102 personnel conduct sexual harassment. Revised superintendent's rule 5520 students conduct student dress code. Revised superintendent's rule 5530 students conduct student use and possession of tobacco products. Also is the financial report for the months ending January 2019 and 2020. And there is also an update on key school legislation. The final agenda item is announcements. The I, excuse next... me, Kathleen. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. This is Makita Scott. Yes, Ms. Scott. Thank you. Um, I had a question on the um, student dress code, um, rule uh, 5520. Yes. And it was under item C, under the standards, where it said um, headwear. And I had a question. It says headwear except as worn for medical reasons or as a legitimate expression of a student's religious practice or faith. I wondered about headwear worn for cultural um, cultural reasons. If Dr. that was Williams, do you have staff available to address that question? Or if not, we could have that uh, question answered for the full board at a later date. Thank you, Ms. Scott. I think we can follow up with the staff for a response to that. Thank you for um, noticing that. Okay, and when you say follow up, is that something that could be added to this, adjusted, or? I think or... it can be adjusted. I will follow up with the appropriate staff. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. The final item on the agenda is item I, announcements. And the only announcement is that we are scheduled to have our next board meeting on Tuesday, April 14th at 6.30 p.m. I appreciate all of uh, Dr. Williams and his team for setting up the remote meeting. And I appreciate all of the uh, board members and staff flexibility as we all deal with uh, new situations. And we wish everyone um, safety and, and wellness. And our meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>